So let's see how to create the same effect in three different game engines, in Unity, in Unreal Engine and in Godot. We are going to do some sparks, a very simple exercise I know, but it's a good exercise that requires a nice amount of properties from a particle system. And it's something we can do quickly while we compare the three engines. Quick overview of the engines in terms of VFX tools. In Unity we have the particle system and VFX graph, one for CPU particles and the other for GPU particles. In Unreal we used to have Cascade, but now it's all Niagara, which can also spawn CPU or GPU particles. And in Godot we also have the possibility to spawn CPU or GPU particles, which is great. In terms of interface and workflow, Godot's particle system is closer to Unity particle system, but very different from Unity VFX Graph and Unreal Niagara. As a matter of fact, Unity VFX Graph is very similar to Unreal Engine Niagara. And lastly, all of these three engines have a node-based shader tool, which is awesome and useful for many people. In Unity it's Shader Graph, in Unreal Engine it's the Material Editor, and in Godot it's the Visual Shader. Right, so let's jump right into this and see the difference between each one of these engines. But before that, I just want to say that these videos are possible thanks to my patrons, and by supporting me, you get access to a huge library of visual effects and you keep this channel going. So let's start with Unity. As you can see, I have a particle system for Sparks and for Flare. The same thing in Unreal, Sparks and Flare, and in Godot too, Sparks and Flare. That's all we are going to do and it's going to give us plenty of properties to look into and workflows. So, in Unity, it's a good practice to start with an empty game object and rename it to VFX underscore Sparks, for example. Reset the transform and push it a value of 1.5 in the Y axis. With right click, we can create an effect, a particle system for the Sparks. So what do we have here? Well, it's already looping, which is great. Then we can set the lifetime. The start lifetime is actually random. We want some randomness between 0 0.2 and 5. We also want some randomness for the start speed between 1.5 and 13, for example, and they go flying forward. The direction of the particles are influenced by the shape module down here, which is set to a cone. If I turn on the gizmos, you can see it's a big ass cone. Let's decrease the radius to 0 0.05 and the angle to 15, which is enough. And I think we need more particles. So on the emission, let's say something crazy like 180 for the rate, yeah, a lot of particles. And now it would be super useful to control these with the gravity, so they kinda fall down. We can say the gravity is random between 0 0.2 and 4. So the motion is pretty much there. Now let's take care of the aspect. We need to stretch them. For that we can use the 3D start size, where the X can be 0 0.04 and the Y 0 0.3. And here we go, we have some needles pointing up, always facing up as you can see but we want them to face their velocity vector. So down here in the render, in the render mode we can say stretch billboard and it will align with our velocity vector, as you can see. Great! They are too stretched because of this length scale. Let's set it to 1. And if you look at the beginning, they are huge, right at the start of the cylinder. So let's use the size over lifetime. By default it comes with this curve which goes from small to big, but we can say it goes from big to small with this one. And then with right click, add a key and push the first key all the way down. And it creates this nice randomness between the size of the particles and they don't start that big. Now, let's add color to this and brightness. For that we need a material, so with right click I'm gonna go ahead and create a material and rename it to flare00 underscore tutorial, for example. What's important is up here on the shader, let's say it's particles and then standard unlit. We can immediately drag and drop this material to our Sparks particle system. It's all a bunch of stretched squares because we need to say in the albedo what's gonna be the texture. And it's the one that I've provided for free on a link below, which is the flare 00. Assign it to the albedo, it's still a bunch of squares because the rendering mode is set to opaque, let's switch it to fade. And here we go. The cool thing now is that with this color, since it is an HDR color, we can increase the intensity to something like 2 or 3, a value between these two. And they become bright. <laughs> Mostly because I've bloomed on my scene, but you get the idea. Now we can, for example, control the color on the particle system, the start color, and say it's a dark orange like this one, and it will look fantastic. 
For the flare, which is also a curious particle system because it's going to be a static flare, let's create a new particle system, call it flare. Since it's going to be static and fast, let's say the lifetime is something between 0.1 and 0.2, and let's say the start speed is 0, we don't want this to move, and it's still moving because of the shape. If we turn it off, it stays in the exact same position. And then we can say the start size is random between 0.2 and 0.6, more or less. Let's take care of the aspect, let's assign the material we created. It's super bright right now, but we can select a dark orange and then decrease the value until you think it looks nice, right? So this is a flare and a sparks. It is kind of blinking really fast and abruptly. To fix that we can use a color over lifetime, which will change the alpha. In the beginning and in the end it's going to be transparent and in the middle it's going to be visible and it will look smoother, right? We can also use the size of our lifetime, where it grows like this, from small to big, and that's pretty much it. And then increase the emission perhaps, play a little bit with the color, but that's essentially it. We have created some very quick sparks and as you can see it's quite straightforward. The particle system contains everything really nicely organized and by default we already have a material that works with the particle system, a shader as a matter of fact, and that's it. In Unreal, it's a little bit different to workflow. So let's see how it is. You see in Unreal with the Niagara particle system, we have two distinct actors, a Niagara emitter and a Niagara system. A Niagara system requires Niagara emitters. Only the Niagara system goes to the scene, into the scene. As you can see, this is a Niagara system with two Niagara emitters. So let's start right there. Let's start by creating two Niagara emitters with a right click, effects, Niagara emitters, and there's a bunch of templates that we can start from, right? Which is useful. I like to start from the simple sprite burst. I'm going to select that one and press finish. This is going to be for the NE, which is Niagara emitter underscore sparks, underscore tutorial, and then another Niagara emitter you can also start from the same template, the simple sprite burst, and this one is actually going to be for an E underscore, well, sprite burst. And from these two Niagara emitters, we can then create a Niagara system, also with right click on effects, Niagara system. And let's start with new system from selected emitters, because we can start a system from the templates or from the emitters we have created. Let's select both while holding control, pick the plus sign, and as soon as we press finish, boom, here we go, our Niagara system will have these two Niagara emitters. What's the advantage of this? Well, we can see Niagara emitters as prefabs, as parents, and then we will instantiate childs in Niagara systems. On the Niagara system, I'm going to click this arrow to enter on the Niagara emitter. It will open up a new tab, and let's create some sparks. Here we have a different structure, we have the emitter options and then the particle spawn, the particle update and the render. On the emitter, this is set to loop only once, we want it to be infinite instead. And we don't want a burst, on this plus sign we can search for a rate, similarly to what we have done in Unity. We can remove the burst and then we have the initialized particle with the lifetime, the start color basically, the position and the size down here, which is set to uniform which means we cannot stretch the particle. Let's set it to random non-uniform and that's how we stretch it. Oh yeah, we don't have particles because spawn rate is set to zero. Let's set it to 100 particles, for example. And now we can stretch the particles on the initialized particle to be between 1 and 10 for the minimum of the x and y and for the maximum of x and y between 5 and 50. We don't see much of a difference. Let's take care of that by adding velocity to them. On the particle spawn, we want to say that these particles will be born with a certain velocity. And we can select linear, from point, or from cone. We want a cone shape, yeah. This is different from the shape module we have in the particle system of Unity. It's only the velocity. Yeah, sorry, the timeline was paused. You can press play down here and see how it looks. They are still overlapped a little bit, so let's increase the velocity so they get scattered. Cool thing is that we can transform values into another property. For example, we can say this float is random now. 
on this arrow, random range, something between 250 and 1500. Here we go. And just like in Unity, they are all facing up and they are not aligned with their velocity vector. And we fix it in the same spot on the render. Down here on the sprite render, the alignment can be velocity aligned. And here we go, we have some sparks, look at them, beautiful. That's pretty much it, the only thing we are missing is gravity now in relation to what we have done in Unity. And gravity is a force that needs to be continuously applied, so that's something we can do in the particle plate. Looking good. That's pretty much it. If we save this and go back to our Niagara system, where we build our effects in the Niagara system, there's a little bug here, I believe, which is the velocity line didn't take effect, but all of the rest is exactly the same as its parent. So yeah, on the sprite render we can say velocity align it. Here we go, uh, that's it. Let's take care of the sprite burst here very quickly. For example, it doesn't loop, so in the emitter state, instead of once, let's say it's infinite. And we also don't want a burst, we want a rate for the spawn. Remove the burst and a rate of 10, perhaps that should be enough. Similarly to what we have done in Unity, let's add a random size in this initialized particle. We can say it's random uniform this time, between 50 and 100. Then we have the scale color just like we did in Unity, so it fades out which is what it's doing, it's only scaling the alpha. And we can also search for size on the particle update and use a scale sprite size, which will control the size of the particle throughout its lifetime. We can say it's growing just like this, you can leave it as it is. And down here, as you can see in the timeline, yeah, the lifetime is very, very long. So let's decrease it, something shorter. Up here we can say random between 0 0.1 and 0 0.3. Here we go, very quickly. That's pretty much it. If we go to our Niagara system, this updates automatically, the changes that we have done. Let me just push the timeline to the beginning. And here we go. If we go to our map, to our level, on the content drawer, we can drag and drop our Niagara system to the scene, place it somewhere, nice. And that's essentially it. We have some sparks. We just need to adjust the color. A cool thing about Niagara and VFX graph is that we can expose properties Let's do that very quickly on these user parameters. On the plus sign, let's search for linear color, rename it to sparks color. And then on the sparks, on the initialized particle, on the color, we can assign the sparks color. And now if you go to the map, this is exposed and we can directly control in the inspector, in the level, the color, for example. And here we go super bright <laughs> sparks. You can do the same for the flare, yeah. You can go again to Niagara system, search for the type you want, in this case linear color, and assign it to the color in the initialized particle of the sprite burst. And that's essentially it. Now you can adjust the color on the level. There we go. That's it. We have some sparks also in Unreal. So as you can see there is major difference here when it comes to workflows. You have Niagara emitters that goes inside Niagara systems and then not everything is exposed. You need to search for specific models like we did for the gravity, for the sprite size scale. Yeah, so that's the major difference. Let's have a look at Godot, which is very similar to the particle system of Unity. Let me just add this. And yeah, just like in Unity, we want to start with an empty game object, in this case a node 3D that we can rename to VFX underscore Sparks underscore Tutorial or V2, yeah sure. And with right click here, we want to add a child node this time for the GPU Particles 3D. This is the Particle system. Rename it to Sparks and we need, we need a new Particle Process Material which has a bunch of properties similar to the Particle system of Unity. It's essentially the Particle system. And then we need a draw pass, which is basically what is the mesh that we are going to draw. In this case, we want to draw a quad, which by default it's already set in Unity and in Unreal. But here we need to specify. And then in geometry, it's basically the material. In this case, we are going to use a standard material 3D. And we can open this material override by clicking on the sphere. And we have a bunch of material properties that we can control. Let's start from the top. Basically, transparency. Yes, we want it to be in alpha, 
call mode is basically if it is two-sided as you can see we don't see it from the back let's say it's disabled so we can see from back and from the front and as you may have noticed the back is a little bit darker that's because in shading mode we wanted to set it to unshaded so it isn't affected by the lights of the scene in this case vertex color we'll see in a moment in albedo we can assign our texture here i'm going to do a quick load i have already the flare 00 on this project and here we go lastly the billboard is specifically set on the material and not on the particle system that's a huge difference compared to unity particle system or niagara which is all right totally all right we want to set it to particle billboard so it always faces the camera as you can see and we'll see a funny thing in a moment let's also turn on keep scale so we can change the size of the particle right i'm just going to push this empty up a value of 1.5 on the y and now for the sparks well let's go up here to the particle process material let's start from way above the amount of particles we want the rate let's set it to something crazy again like 160 and the time of each particle the lifetime in this case it's going to be 1.2 but we are going to add randomness to that lifetime on the process material you can say the lifetime randomness is 0 0.5 a little bit weird why is it so far below emission shape we can say it's a sphere we don't have cone but that's all right and the radius can be small like 0 0.2 or 0 0.1 just so that they don't start at the exact same position this is always going down because of the gravity we can set it to minus 5 and then we want some initial velocity which is basically the start speed in unity of the particle system and add velocity in niagara a minimum of three and a maximum of six and they are going in a specific direction that is set up there we will see in a moment for now let's decrease the size which is scale and we can say it's 0 0.02 and 0 0.1 everything is a little bit mixed up in here i would say but it's all right once you get to know where everything is for example the color i have already a swatch here i'm gonna select it you can copy the values from the raw section if it goes above one it will become brighter and on this case nothing is showing because on the material we need to specify the vertex color we want to enable we want to use as albedo and here we go beautiful color so the particle system can communicate with the color of the material it's also worth mentioning that I have also post-processing effects like some glow which really adds that nice glow anyway back to the sparks they are round as you can see we need to stretch them right just like we did in unity and in unreal but first as you can see up here we have the direction if we set it to one in a y it goes up and if we set it to one in z it goes to the z I'm gonna leave it at one in x but the spread essentially is the angle even though it's spawning in a sphere location thanks to this direction it's going to the x axis direction with an angle of 45 which we can decrease to 20. to take care of the stretch of the particle how do we stretch it it's also in the scale but for some weird reason it's via curve we want to use here a curve x y and z texture we need to create a new curve for the x y and z which by default they are all set to zero as well and let's open the z curve for example create a key push it to one do the same now for the y create the key push it to one and in the x a new key and push it to one here we go they are visible so here's the cool thing now we can stretch them in the y axis we can say the max value of this graph is three and then push this key all the way up and here we go we are stretching them let's add a key at the end and push it down so they shrink at the end let's do the same in the x we want the key at the end push it down exactly like this so they become smaller at the end okay so they are stretched but they are not aligned with their velocity vector so how do we do that here in Godot? it's a little bit weird once again but it works that's all right it works we want to turn on align y in the particles flag nothing really changes and that got me wondering why nothing is changing well after making a few tests i realized that billboard is getting in the way if we disable it as you can see now each particle is aligned with their velocity vector and it looks awesome 
that's it, we have some sparks in Goro. So yeah, I would say a little bit more confusing. With a few improvements in organization, this will be awesome. Let's create the flare, by the way. We right click, add the child node, a GPU particle 3D, rename it to flare. And we need to create the same process here. New particle process material, exactly. We need a draw pass, which is the mesh. Let's say it's a quad. And geometry, we need a material. New standard material 3D. Transparency, it's alpha. Shading is unshaded. Vertex color, yes, used as albedo. And a texture, quick load, flare 00. zero. And now this one, yeah, we need it to be in billboard mode, particle billboard, and turn on keep scale so we can change its scale on the particle system up there. And now let's say the amount is 4, the rate, and the lifetime is 0 0.2. And now on the process material, let's click it to open this up. Let's say the lifetime is random 1, for example. Shape is alright. Let's say it's smaller, the scale, between 0 0.1 and 0 0.5. We also want a curved texture, which is different than the other one that exposed each axis. And in here we want to say it grows, for example, from small to big, something like this. The user experience of the curves is great here in Godot. Gravity, yeah, it doesn't need to move, so I'm gonna set it to zero. And here we go, we have a flare, a static flare. All we gotta do now is select the color. I'm gonna use on the swatches the same color that I had previously, and that's essentially it. I didn't show you how to fade in and fade out, but it is the color ramp. Forgot to record that. But now you get an idea of the differences between each one of these three engines. I would say Godot is a little bit more confusing. It's normal, it's compared to Unreal and Unity, it's more recent. Unreal has a ton of experience, but you need to know what you are doing, you need to know which models you want to use. The same thing happens in VFX Craft, which we didn't use here, but if you want to watch this tutorial, you will see how to create the same effect in a particle system and in VFX Graph, which is also some sparks, and you will see the difference between each one. And then we have the particle system from Unity, which is very well organized. Everything is there, and it has been used for many games and works in all platforms. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope you have enjoyed this video. I try to show you a little bit of each engine in terms of particle systems and what they can do and how do you set up the basic stuff, you know. So yeah, that's it. These videos are possible thanks to my patrons. I want to say thank you to each one of them. And if you can support me, that would be awesome. And I would be able to keep on creating this type of videos for you. And lastly, a quick shout out to the top tier patrons, as usual, which are Admin Lion Car, are Alberto Sageres, Alexander Brazy, Alan Alstead, Alvman, Apon Fire, Aviat Tobali, Brian Plam, Cyber Cradle, Daniel Schmidt, Dayaku, Diana Simonian, Diego Andrade, Diego Marx, Dylan Stottle, El Sheriff, Eric Horner, Fang Striker, Frosty Forty, George Michael Berg, Grub Lab, Guilherme Trindad, Jackson Doyle, Jared Billy, GYC, TC Miller, Half Top, Leon Nolt, Lutuli, Matt Moran, Maciej Rezniewski, Mike Bell, Nat Sims, Nikolai Yelnazov, Oitsk, Passy98, Pavan Venkat, Pradip Sen, Radioactive Bullfrog, Revenant Games, Robert Tortinger, RVR, The Gap Year, Project, Tom Tom, Travis McCallum, Larry Suta, Will Hoos, Will Poilion, Shan, Dong Mogdong, Ching Pyongling, and Min J Kim. So that's it guys, I hope you have enjoyed and I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks, bye.